Good evening, Roxana. It is uh, 6 30. Uh, it's, it's good to be with you uh, this evening for a Bible study. Uh, as you're coming in, if you would just chime in to let me know that you are there, uh, we'll, we'll give a few minutes for others to join in with us. I thank God for you. I thank God for today. Uh, it, it has truly been uh, a blessing. Uh, tonight we continue in our Kingdom Living Study dealing with strender through surrender. Uh, tonight we will continue in our study of strength through surrender. As, as, as we're waiting on others to come in, I hope you've had uh, a blessed day, a, a good day. Uh, and even if things didn't go your way, know that God is still in charge. I, I thank each one of you as you're signing in. Uh, it's, it's good to see you, uh, that, that you are here tonight. I, I thank God for his blessings. I thank him for just taking care of all of us in this season that we're in. Uh, as, as we prepare to go before uh, God with this lesson tonight, let's, let's take a moment for a word of prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you tonight. We thank you for this moment uh, of study, even on this virtual platform, Lord God, we still give you the honor, the glory, and the praise for you alone are worthy. Uh, tonight, Lord God, as we go forth in this lesson, let something be said that someone can take hold of, something that they can carry on in, in, into the week that's before them. And then, Lord, maybe something that they can share with someone else. Just have your way. Speak now to your children, even in this hour, Lord God. Speak as only you can. And, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey Amen. I, I thank God I see so many of you are signing in now. Uh, it's, it's, it's amazing how even in this season, I thank God we have a strong Bible study at Rock Center. But even in this season, uh, there's still strength in our numbers. And, and I thank God for the platform where we can reach out and others can join in with us. But as, as we go forward tonight, uh, in this study, I, I want you to understand, I've said this often, and I continue to say this uh, to you, Roxana, and to those that are, that are viewing with us tonight in this virtual Bible study, that when we run out of our own strength, when we've done all we can do, it takes us to a place where we can see the strength of God. In our weakest moments for the believer, in our weakest moments, this is the time when we become strong, when when we're able to take our hands off the circumstances and situations and allow God to do his work. There is strength in surrender. Uh, tonight, at, as we go forward, I, I want to look at, I want to start to look at three things. I'll get only to one tonight, but I, I, I want to look at three things over the next three Wednesdays, uh, three truths in the in in this con concept of strength through surrendering. Uh, if you have your Bibles tonight uh, or your electronic instruments, I, I want you to go to Romans chapter eight. You can turn there. Uh, we're going over to Romans chapter eight tonight. Uh, there, there's a, a, a word there for us that will bless us as as we continue in this study tonight. So go over to Romans chapter 8. Join me there and I'll tell you uh, what scripture we're going to start with. We're going over to uh, verse number 18. Uh, Romans chapter 8 going over to verse number 18. When, as, as you're turning, I'll continue to teach the lesson. Um, when Adam and Eve decided that they were going to take on the act of sin, which they did not knowingly, knowing that they were sinning against God, they, they relied on their own ability to make decisions. But the decision that they made led them into a place where they sinned against God. 
in this circumstance as, as they sinned against God, something happened. There was a release of evil into the world. You have to understand that to understand that God is a merciful God. He's a merciful God. Man became bound by corruption because of Adam and Eve's act of sin. Uh, the old preacher would say the mistakes of the first Adam put man in bondage to sin, but it's the actions of the second Adam being Jesus Christ that would free him. Uh, tonight, as, as, as we're looking at this thing about strength through surrender in this lesson, I, I, I want you to know that, yes, we're bound by sin, not by choice, even as we try to live correctly before God, but sin is ever present. When, when you least expect it, it, it can show up. Temptation can show up in your life. Some things entered into this world that we had no control over. Confusion, frustration, suffering, uh, all that God had created was, was affected by the, the actions of Adam and Eve. And here we are now, God had to deal with that. Sin has to be dealt with. And in his dealing with Adam and Eve, his judgment upon them has ran over to us, even as believers. And, and you need to know tonight, no matter how we want to escape the sin and evil that's in this world, it has been released and we're subject to be trapped by it. We're subject to be enticed by it. We're, we're subject to, to fall into a situation or a circumstance that will take us to a place where we literally go against God's will for our lives. Uh, tonight, I, I want you to understand that God is still working it out. He's working it out even now that in, in our lives, we are faced with temptation and sin, but yet God is working his plan. Systematically, he's working his plan. He started with Jesus Christ. By allowing his son to die for our sins, he started a plan to redeem us, a plan of redemption and salvation to put us back into right relationship with him. And it takes effort. But part of that effort leads us to where we are tonight in the study as we deal with strength through surrender. If, if you have your electronic instrument or your Bible tonight, uh, I, I, I want to go over to verse number 18 there in Romans 8, uh, and, and we'll start reading there. There's a word from God for his people. It says, for I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Paul says the time that he was living in, but this is a present tense word. It's a real time word for us today that even in this moment of suffering in the present time, it's not worthy to com be, be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. God is still working in us to bring glory to him. It's all about him tonight. And we have to understand that. And, and the verse number 19 says, for the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subject to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. As children of God, we find ourselves in a place of corruption, but because you are there does not mean you have to participate. I hope somebody heard me tonight because sin is present around you does not mean that you have to participate. Our, our, our job as believers is to glorify God in all that we do. Our strength comes 
when we step outside of ourselves, when we run out of our abilities and we're willing to surrender and allow God to use us, even in a corrupted state, we allow God to use us to bring glory to him. That's important to remember tonight that even in our corrupted state, as a sinner just saved by grace, I'm, I have to be willing to allow God to use me to bring glory to himself. As, as we consider this tonight, though evil may be present, even though it may be working its work, and as, as we try to live life at a standard that's pleasing to God, we have to remember that as, as, as children of God, through Jesus Christ, we, are, we will be made perfect when we are with him. But right now we're striving for perfection. Righteousness is not something we purchased. Righteousness is something that's imputed on us. It's put on us. And I said this often to you, Roxana, it's imputed on you because of what Christ did on the cross for you. I, I, I shared today with some that, that so often we hear the, the phrase, our sins will find us out. That's not necessarily true. That's not the truth according to God's word. Because in God's word, as believers, when we study the word, the word tells us that our sins are cast into the sea of forgetfulness, never to be brought up again. Man can bring up, trying to bring it back to your remembrance. But because you remember something, doesn't mean you have to participate in it. I, I hope you got that tonight. Because you can remember something, does not mean that you have to participate in it. But the fact that you remember it, it ought to keep you from doing it again, knowing that God delivered you out of that situation. How often do we see people going through the same thing over and over? Even in relationships, God will de deliver them from one bad relationship and, and not trusting him, they'll go out and get back in the same type of relationship. They'll choose the same type of people who once got them in trouble. They'll choose the same type of people to develop friendships with and not understanding that God has delivered them from that sin, that that sin can no longer run them down if they would stand in the strength of his word. That's an awesome thing to remember tonight, that what God has done for us. Uh, I, I made a note tonight that the worst thing that could happen to fallen humanity would be to live with the infection of sin. You ought to get that. The worst thing that can happen to fallen humanity would be to live with the infection of sin. See, there's a cure for the infection of sin, but as believers, we have to be willing to surrender to, to the medication that we need to take through God's word, that prescription that he has, we have to willingly be willing to put ourselves in a position where we can apply it in our lives. But that's the worst thing to happen is that we constantly find ourselves being infected by sin. We have to, we have to allow God to do a, a perfecting work in us, but he's not going to force you to do a perfecting work. He wants you to choose and open up your heart and allow him to come in by choice to do the perfecting work. As, as we look at this tonight, I, I, I want to take a moment just to, to give you an example. In, in the course of, of sin coming into the earth through Adam and Eve, God could have resolved the problem right away. If, if you get a chance tonight, I want you to go back and look at Genesis chapter three and, and, and read that when you have some time. God could have solved the problem of sin coming into the earth, but if he takes on and destroys sin by force, then he has to destroy love as well. Y'all didn't get that. If he destroys sin that has entered into the earth, he has to destroy love as well. Because see, in, in, and as, as we understand this, I'm going to make it plain tonight. 
he, he gives us free will and out of free will comes freedom. But if God decides that he's going to destroy all sin, if he decides that sin is never going to be present with Adam and Eve any farther than that moment, he destroys love, he destroys freedom, he destroys free will. Because now free will gives us a choice, the same choice that Adam and Eve had. Love would have caused them, their love for God should have caused them to go to the place where they would not participate in sin. The free will choice. I wonder how many of you exercise your free will choice. I'm, I wonder how many of you tonight are exercising free will in your life to the point that God doesn't have to punish you to get you to serve him. That God does not have to have some type of act to come along in your life that's going to bring you to your knees, but you made a free will choice out of your love for God and what he's done for you, that you're serving him willingly. And see, there comes that surrender piece because he could bring all of us to our knees at any given time, at any given moment, but he's waiting on us to make the free will in such a manner that our lives bring glory we're waiting for God to glorify us. We are waiting for God to glorify us. That will happen when Christ returns. But until then, we need to surrender. We need to yield to him. And in that yielding, we'll find our strength. Just for a moment, if you can, go back to your scripture Go back to the Bible there, picking up at verse 21. It says this, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bonds of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. He takes us, he's, he's guaranteeing us that we'll be delivered from, from sin and corruption as we become the children of God of God. How many of you know tonight that God is still a deliverer? That even though we are dealing with the judgment of, of Adam's sin, even though we are dealing with the judgment of Eve's sin, it's still upon mankind because God cannot come and wipe out total corrupt, corruption right now without wiping out love and freedom. So as that judgment stands above our heads, He's opened the door that we might have liberty. Our liberty comes through accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So when we accept Christ, we come into the liberty of God. God gives us ultimate freedom, that ultimate freedom. Isn't that awesome that God can free you up from whatever circumstance or situation you're in if you're willing and, a, and, and, a, and you allow him to come into your life and you're willing to surrender totally unto him. That's, that's an awesome piece. I don't care where you're at in life right now. I don't care what you're experiencing. I don't care what you're going through. It's not too big for God to handle. If you are a child of the king, you've been set free. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you ought to start walking in the liberty. You ought to start walking in the liberty that you have at hand. Too many of us that are believers, too many of us that claim to be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit, too many of us are still walking in bondage of corruption, and it's by choice because we choose to do sinful things. We choose to do things that hurts the heart of God. We choose to do things that groan in the spirit of God through the Holy Spirit, but yet he's made a, a way for us that we have not started to walk in the liberty that God made tonight. That's awesome to me. Let's, let's go back to the scripture there. And it says in verse 22, it says this, for we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. Not only that, but we also have the first fruits of the spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for adoption. There it is. We're going through some stuff. 
it, and it doesn't seem right that being children of God, that we, we, we have to face the things we have to face. Here it is. We're dealing with this virus. We're, we're dealing with the coronavirus. And it seems like if God was so much God and we are the children of God, God wouldn't have us go through this situation. But because this stuff is released, it was released long before we got here. It was released when evil came in the earth. All these things, disease, famine, all this stuff, frustration, all this stuff, depression, despair, all this stuff was released. And we're going through it. But our hope is in Jesus Christ. So we're in that place where we are groaning on the inside. Our spirit, man, is groaning for deliverance. But our joy has to come out of knowing that God is still a deliverer. And through Christ Jesus, he will deliver us if we're willing to surrender ourselves totally unto him. How many of you can find strength in that tonight? Knowing that if you are obedient, Knowing that if you just serve the Lord, knowing that if you take your hands off of some things, that God is going to move on those situations and circumstances in his timing. Our strength is through surrender. Here it is. We, and I wrote this down. We need to understand that being saved does not make us immune to physical suffering. We need to know that being saved does not make us immune to physical suffering. That's a powerful piece because a lot of people have the wrong interpretation when it comes to salvation. We think when we give our lives to Christ, that trouble will subside, that we won't have any problems. I want you to hear me tonight. Some problems come because you decided to give your life to Christ. Some things you're facing comes because the Lord allows the enemy to test you. You say you have great faith. You say you trust the Lord in every circumstance and situation. Yet God will allow the enemy to come in and test you. I, 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 I'm not getting a lot of response on that. See, you got to understand that maybe you are where you are because you've declared in your life that I'm going to serve the Lord regardless. And the Lord says, I can trust you because of your faith. You've surrendered yourself. Well, surrendering doesn't give you the right to choose the circumstances that God will place you in. Surrendering gives you the right to trust God regardless of the circumstances he places you in. You need to get that tonight. Surrendering does not give you the right to choose what circumstance God will place you in or allow you to come into. But surrendering does give you the right to trust him in those circumstances and situations you may find yourself in. So our strength comes through surrendering. There's one verse, another verse I want to lift here tonight, and I want you to hear this. I want you to hear me good now. Verse number 25. But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. So you can't see the healing. You can't see the miracle. You can't see what's coming on your behalf. But as you wait and anticipate, it comes with perseverance. In other words, as you wait, you still got to go through. Did you hear me tonight? As you're waiting, you still have to go through. There's perseverance tied to surrendering. Because I go patiently wait on the Lord means nothing. It means that nothing's going to happen. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to experience some things. But while I'm waiting, I'm persevering. I'm going to endure this thing until the Lord moves his hand. How many of you are willing to wait tonight? How many of you are willing to persevere tonight? You're willing to go through this thing. Yeah, I, I wish this, this situation had never showed up. But if God allowed it, I'm going to persevere through it. If God has allowed this virus 
to come into the earth and it's doing what it's doing. My strength is in trusting God, even this moment that I'm eagerly awaiting with hope that he's going to move on the situation. But while I'm waiting, I still have to persevere. I got to continue to go through. I got to continue to do the things that I need to do. I got to continue to serve him like I know I need to serve him. I got to continue to seek his face like I know I need to seek his face. And all that I do, that I might be before him and God can find us worthy as children of God, that when he looks at us, he sees us in a, in a, in a surrendered posture, that our strength totally lies on him. That's amazing to me tonight. Uh, as, as we look at this, here it is. Let's go one step further tonight. When we look at Romans, it's teaching us that we are a part of a ruined creation, that spiritual redemption does not happen automatically. It calls for action on our behalf. We have to realize as we've read these scriptures tonight that we are a part of a ruined creation. God didn't ruin us, we ruined ourselves. Adam and Eve made the mistake, so that put corruption in place. It put evilness in place. It put disease in place. It put all this frustration. Those things that are produced of the wicked is in place. But we have to realize that because we're in that state, because we are part of the ruined creation, that spiritual redemption does not happen automatically. It takes effort on our part to get in the proper posture for God to redeem us. You didn't hear me. It takes effort on our part to get in the proper posture for God to redeem us. How do we do that? Redemption comes through surrendering. I can't emphasize it enough. Redemption comes through surrendering. Let's listen to this. Here it is. Being immunity we are not we are not immune from from pain and suffering it doesn't happen automatically for us to be in a position of redemption it takes action on our part but it still does not immune us from pain and suffering christ suffered for us suffering is part of this walk with our lord and savior jesus christ you're going to go through some things. Some things you're going to go through, you're not going to understand them as you're going through them. But you can't give up. You got to continue to keep the faith. Every day won't be a day filled with roses and sunshine. There are going to be some days that you're going to wonder, is truly God watching over me? There are going to be some days that will make you question who you are in your faith. But even when those days show up, you still have to find the tenacity to persevere. That I'm going on anyhow. I'm, I'm going to press on forward as I depend on God to see me through my circumstance or situation. That's your strength. Knowing that I've surrendered, that I've yielded it all over to him. And, and even if I can't see his hand moving, even if I can't see him doing anything, even if I can't acknowledge the fact that my life is changing. God is still working this thing out. I believe I have one or two people here tonight that are, that are viewing that you understand that God has moved in a miraculous way, even in your own life. And you need to give him a praise for that, that God has moved in your life. There are some things he's done for you that you could never have done for yourself. There are some things that he's accomplished. There are some places he's brought you out of. I can testify. There are some things that he's delivered you from that you wouldn't have been able to deliver yourself from. But God moved on your behalf. He worked some things out because you had the willingness to surrender to him. You yield yourself to him. And out of your yielding, out of your yielding, now God turns around and he delivers. That's awesome. All I have to do is turn it all 
over to him. All I have to do is turn it all over to him. As, as we're coming down to the close tonight for this first point, this first truth, uh, as, as we look at this in our strength to, to, to surrender, we were going to consider three truths in the next three Wednesdays. As we look at this first one, I, I want to finish this scripture up because it's important. I want you to hear the word of God as it speaks to us. Verse 25 says, but if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. So you're hoping that God is going to move, but with perseverance, you're still staying in. You're not giving up. You're still enduring. But notice what he says by verse number 26. Likewise, the spirit being the Holy Spirit also helps in our weakness. We have a confidant. We have someone that doesn't leave us alone in the presence of the Holy Spirit. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. I like that. That's a great place to get where we need to get tonight. Even when I go in prayer, God already knows my condition. He knows my circumstance because I have the Holy Spirit who becomes my intercessor and he's already making God aware of what my needs are. Even when we go before God in error, even when we are wrong, we go asking for stuff when we got things that we need, when, when needs hadn't been met, but we got a wish list that we want to put for God, before God. We have a Holy Spirit that acts as an intercessor who turns around and edits our prayer. I hope somebody heard me tonight. Maybe what you asked for wasn't what you needed, but God got you what you needed because the Holy Spirit interceded on your behalf. You, you asked for some things, but the things came off of your want list. They didn't come off of your what I need list. So the, the Holy Spirit made intercession even for you in your weakness. Maybe you fell prey to some things. Oh God, we're there tonight. Maybe you fell prey to some things in your weakness. You got in a situation or a circumstance and you justified in your own mind that it was right. But the Holy Spirit knows that it's wrong. And the Holy Spirit groans on your behalf before God, for God to move you out of a situation that you even trying to stay in. I wish I had some witnesses in here tonight. I, I feel good behind that because sometimes as, as human beings, as humanity, we want to stay in some stuff that's not good for us. Even in our weakness, we want to find comfort among fallen humanity. We want to find comfort among folk like us. That's why you see a drug addict, a drug addict not rocking around hanging with folks who ain't on drugs. They find in comfort with being with someone that's in the same situation or the same mess that they're in. But yet, because we are children of God, the Holy Spirit will make intercession for us and know what we need. We need deliverance, but we are asking God for a little bit more of this and a little bit more of that, but that's not what we need. I, I thank God tonight that, that the Holy Spirit truly makes intercession for us in our prayers when we go before God. Even when we are praying in error, there's a groaning in the spirit that can be understand with human ears, but yet it falls on the ears of God that God might understand and God might meet the needs, not necessarily our requests, but our needs. He says he'll give you the desires of your heart. He says, just ask. But I'm glad I got somebody that, that works on my behalf, the Holy Spirit, that when I'm asking for stuff, I'm, I might be asking for something, but I'm not ready to handle it yet. I'm not in a position when I can, where I can take it and use it to its best of its ability. So the, the Holy Spirit says, hold up, God. They are not prepared. They are not ready. They are not spiritually at the place where they can receive that. If you give it to them now, it might do more damage than good. I'm glad I got somebody that makes intercession for me. 
Here we are. Verse number 27 says, Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Oh God, that's something to shout about tonight. The Holy Spirit is making intercession for us according to the will of God. Can I make it simple for you to understand tonight why it's so important that you surrender, that you find strength through surrendering? Because when you surrender, the Holy Spirit sees the will of God. Oh God, somebody's going to get it tonight. You're where you are because it's the will of God. You want it to be somewhere else. Maybe you desire to be in another city. Maybe you desire to be in another job. Maybe you desire to, to, to be in a whole different kind of circumstance, but your desiring was not in the will of God for your life. The, it, the Holy Spirit has the will of God before him. So when you go in prayer on one thing and you put that thing before God, the Holy Spirit now can make intercession because he's going to look at what you're praying for, but then he's going to look at the will of God. And if the two don't line up, then the will of God will always override what you desire. Can I help somebody tonight? You need to make sure that your desires line up with the will of God. That's our strength through surrendering, that it puts us in a posture where our desires can line up with the will of God. I don't, I don't think you know how important that is because God has a will for all of us. He has will and purpose for all of us in our lives. You can desire something, but if God doesn't give you the stamp of approval, I've seen too many people get in places that they shouldn't be in, but they had God's favor on them. I wish I had one or two people that could witness to that tonight. I've seen too many people in my life who've ended up in positions or places or in jobs because God had put a stamp of approval on them. It wasn't because they were so educated. It wasn't because they had so many degrees by their name, but it was the favor of God that moved in their life. The Holy Spirit said, bless them. It's in their will. It's in the will for their life. And, and when, when God moved on it, he moved them into a position. There are some folk who have been exalted that we probably never thought should ever be in a place of power or prestige, but God knew he could trust them in those places. Somebody going to get with me in a minute. And there are some people who went and got the right education. They got the right training. They got the, the, the right uh, resume. They got it all in order, but they can't get in the place where they desire to be because God didn't put his stamp of approval on it. They hadn't surrendered to him. They hadn't yielded to him. They are trying to do it all by themselves. They've left him out of the picture. They left him out of the equation. And they wonder why they can't get it done. I went to all the right schools. I, my family has the right last name. I have the right pedigree, but that doesn't matter to God. God is not a respecter of person. He doesn't care. He can take the least of us and do great things with them. So that's why it's important for us as believers tonight to learn how to surrender, to learn how to bend the knee before our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And when we surrender, God can do more with us than we could do by ourselves. That's a blessing within itself tonight, to know that if I'm willing to yield, God can bless me in such a manner that he can move in my life as long as that's as according to his will. Somebody needed to hear that tonight. Maybe you need to go back and reevaluate your position with God. Maybe you need to go back and reevaluate and assess your relationship with God. Have you truly surrendered or is he just a part-time God? Is he behind the glass? I often use the illustration. Once upon a time, before they put fire extinguishers and, and, and before they put the uh, the little things in the ceiling that, that allow water to come in to put out fires in buildings. They used to have a fire hose behind a glass. And it says, in case of emergency, break the glass. I wonder 
How many of you have God behind the glass and the only time you let him out in your life is when you get in trouble, you decide to break the glass by praying. And, and, and you want God to move on that circumstance. You want him to put the fire out in your life. Well, here it is tonight. You need to have him all the time. You need his assurance. So strength comes through surrendering. When I surrender, I don't have to wait for an emergency. I'm already in the proper posture with God that when the Holy Spirit looks at the will of God, even when I'm out of order, there's grace and mercy. Even when I'm not lining up, there's mercy. Even when I'm doing it my way and it's not within the will of God, God has a corrective spirit through the Holy Spirit. He can chastise us as his children and bring us back into order, in perfect order, to put us in the proper posture with him. But you got to seek him in order for that to be done. How many times are we missing opportunities? because we hadn't lined up with the will of God. And, and we get upset and we start looking at other people's lives. We start looking at all that God is doing in other folks' lives. And we wonder why it's not happening for me. I, I paid my tithes. I, 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 I've come to church every Sunday, but coming to church on Sunday doesn't put you in the will of God. You just showed up to bricks and mortar. The will of God is what's in your heart. Have you been have you spoken a kind word? Have you helped somebody along the way? Have you treated someone the way you wanted to be treated? Have you reached beyond your circumstance and situation to be a blessing to somebody else? To walk in the footsteps of Jesus Christ, to take on the proper posture of Jesus Christ and, and to live in such a manner that God is pleased. There it is. Surrendering. Total surrender gives us strength, our strength through surrendering in my weakest moments or when I'm the strongest, because I have to totally lean and depend on the Lord. If you've ever been without, if you've ever been down and out as a child of God, and you can admit tonight that the only reason you made it was because the Lord stepped in then you're in the proper posture because it's his will, it's in his will that none of us perish. So you have his blessed assurance, not just an assurance, you have his blessed assurance. And that's what we need to know tonight, that as, as we bring this lesson down to a close tonight, we need to understand, I need his blessed assurance. And the only way I can get that is through total surrender. My strength is surrendering. Tonight, some things came out in the lesson, just as a quick recap that I want you to hold on to. That God is aware of your circumstance and situation. If you get the opportunity, take time to go back and read through the passage tonight, starting Romans chapter eight at verse number 18. Start, go back and read through it again tonight. God is aware of our situation. He's aware that the creation is groaning. He knows what we are going through, but he's waiting on us to look to him. And even when we are looking to him, that word perseverance came up, that even when we are looking toward him and we have a newfound hope in, inside of us and, and we are believing God for the manifestation of something in the natural, we still have to persevere. We still have to go through. Yes, it'll be nice if God just reach in and lift us up out of something, but some things he's gonna allow us to go through because our experiences will make us better. How many of you know that tonight? You're better because of some things you've gone through in life. You're stronger tonight because of some things that you've experienced in your life. So here we are, as we bring this to a wrap up, our strength through surrendering. We have to keep our hope because our hope lies in God through Jesus Christ. But we have to be willing to surrender. And through surrendering, we get to learn perseverance. Your perseverance is you going through it. And in, in the process, don't abort the process. Thank you, God. Do not abort the process. Stay in the process. Because in the process, there's provision 
In the process, there's his protection. In the process, there's a blessing. And if you go back through the word of God and, and you look at all of those that God has ever delivered, God made a way for them. But while he was making a way, he provided for them and he protected them. So you may have uncertainty on your forefront tonight. You don't know where this thing is going to go. You don't know how you're going to make the ends meet. It's going to be okay if you surrender unto God. If you're totally surrendered, you'll find strength and you'll see that God will make provision for you. Scripture said that the Holy Spirit is our intercessor. There in Romans chapter 8, in those verses 18 through 23, and beyond. He says the Holy Spirit, Paul says the Holy Spirit is an intercessor. It's evaluating our requests before they ever get to God to make sure they line up with the will of God. It's the will of God that none of us should perish. It's the will of God that we all be delivered from the corruption of sin. But until we line up and surrender unto him, there's very little that he can do. Sometimes we have to take responsibilities for where we are in life. God said, go left, but you chose to go right. God said, I've already worked it out, but you said, God, I can fix this myself. And, and, and you made a bigger mess of what God had already purposed to work out on your behalf. It's strength through surrendering. So I challenge each one of you tonight, my Rock Sounder Church family, to those that who have tuned in tonight ver via this virtual platform, I continue to challenge you to find your strength through surrendering. Trust God even when it looks like it's all bleak. Trust God when it looks like there's nowhere for you to turn. Trust God when it seems like everything is working against you. I promise you, if you decide to turn it all over to him, if you're willing to yield to him, God is going to work it out on your behalf. He's going to work it out in such a manner you won't ever have to worry. Your strength is in Jesus Christ. The, the scripture said tonight, we were waiting on the adoption, that we're waiting to be adopted, that, that God has got a plan. Ever since man messed it up in Genesis 3, God has been working to correct it, to put us in that proper posture. No, we're not perfect. None of us are perfect, but we're striving for perfection. God has covered us in his righteousness through his son, Jesus Christ. But upon the day of his coming, upon the day of his return, we shall be made perfect. What a blessing that is to know that if I just wait on the Lord, Regardless of what state I'm in, if I just wait on the Lord, if I just trust him, that God is going to deliver me from my circumstance and my situation. How long? I don't know how long, but just wait on him. Trust him and, and watch God move on your behalf. There's nothing that you cannot do with God working on your behalf. Find your strength through surrendering tonight. Be willing to trust God more than you trust yourself. So as, as we get ready to close this lesson out tonight, I want us to go before God in a word of prayer. Uh, for those that are tuning in with us, you didn't catch the lesson tonight. I want you to go back, take your Bibles, your electronic instrument. I want you to go back and read through Romans chapter eight, starting there at verse uh, number 18 and, and, and read it down to it through its entirety there. Uh, God has a word for you. I believe it'll bless your life. And, and I, I thank you tonight, Roxana, to those that are viewing uh, from the city and beyond the state. I've seen some that have come in tonight that are outside of the state of Alabama. I thank God for all of you uh, coming into this virtual platform to be with us tonight. And, and may God be a blessing unto you. But as we close out the lesson tonight, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you tonight for this, this time of study. We thank you for a better understanding that there is strength in our surrendering. Lord, we've all tried to work some things out on our own according to our own terms. But yet, Lord, when we've put our hands to so many things, they've produced nothing. But Father God, we, we thank you tonight 
for a better understanding through your word. That Lord God, that you've given us a Holy Spirit, not only is he a comforter, but Lord, he's an intercessor. That Lord God, he evaluates our requests and our prayers before they ever get to you. That Lord God, he makes sure that what we are asking for lines up with his will for us in our lives. He's a protector. I thank you for that tonight. Lord God, bless every family represented on this virtual platform tonight. Bless their loved ones near and far. Cover them and keep them, Lord, in this season that we're in. Lord, as, as we deal with this virus, as we deal with COVID-19, Lord God, cover the children of God. Lord God, give them strength to understand that, Lord God, they must persevere. Don't give up. Lord God, if they find themselves attacked by the virus, Lord, instill in their hearts to fight the good fight, not to give up, that Lord God, if they surrender themselves unto you, you are yet a deliverer. Continue to bless our efforts as children of God, that we might be shining examples, that someone else may see our light in this dark world that we live in. Lord God, strengthen all of us as you see fit according to your measure. Give us more understanding and enlightenment so we can live a life that's pleasing in your sight. And we claim this already done right now in the name of Jesus and for his sake, amen. God bless you and keep you. Uh, my Rock Santa Church family, I love you. To all of those who've joined in according to this virtual uh, platform, I love you. And, and I want you to come back and visit with us again. I thank God for you and, and continue to trust God. Continue to understand that there is strength through surrendering. There is strength through surrendering. Don't go through life trying to do it on your own terms, but get to the place where you're willing to yield and watch what God will do for you. I contend tonight that there is a blessing in the business. I look forward to seeing you guys uh, Sunday morning, worship is at 1030. Join us back on this virtual platform of Facebook Live. Uh, I want you to be there as we look forward to having a great worship experience on Sunday morning in the house of the Lord. I thank God for each one of you. Keep pastor in your prayers as you pray daily. Continue to pray for my strength in the Lord. And 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 we're gonna we're gonna bless the Lord on Sunday. I can already know that. We're going to bless the Lord Sunday morning. So I look forward to seeing you there. Have a great rest of the week. Stay focused. And as I said at Rock Santa, eyes open, stay woke. Keep your eyes on God. He's doing a great work. A great work. May God continue to bless and keep you is my prayer. See you Sunday morning. Bless you. Have a great evening.